bag on wheels. Today, it's all about cotton. How's cotton taken out of the field? Where does it go after the field? Well, we're here at LaFaria Co-op in LaFaria, Texas with Chris Martinez, the general manager. Hey, Chris. Hey, Michelle, how's it going? It's going well. You gonna tell us all about cotton? Oh, I'm gonna give it my best shot, that's for sure. Well, let's go. The king of fibers. Chances are you're wearing something made out of cotton or you have used something today that came from cotton. Cotton dates back to the BC era and today it accounts for over 40% of clothing manufacturing. Now, while it is a beautiful crop, it is a strenuous one to grow and it requires a lot of attention, much like one of a child. But with that being said, the plant itself, it's not very complex. Cotton consists of stems and branches. As it grows, it develops a series of nodes up the main stem. The flowers will only last a couple days. And once those flowers fall off, that is when the bowl is formed. The bowl is the rounded mature fruit of the cotton plant. The average bowl will contain nearly 500 thousand cotton fibers. When it comes to cotton harvest, it's pretty safe to say that advancements have been made. Cotton used to be picked by hand. Then after, the seeds would have to be picked out of the lint. So let's fast forward to today, where cotton pickers and cotton strippers can be used. Now once it's harvested, cotton is usually made into a cotton bale or a module. A bale can weigh an average of 480 pounds. Now guys, it doesn't just stop there. Once it's harvested into bales or modules, there's a lot of trash, as I like to call it. Meaning there's a lot of sticks, dirt, pieces of bowls, and this is where the cotton gin comes into play. The cotton gin was invented by Eli Whitney in 1774. The cotton gin really means a cotton machine that quickly and easily separates cotton fibers from their seeds which enables greater productivity. Now, Eli Whitney's gin was able to produce about 50 pounds of cotton a day. Today, 50 pounds of cotton is done in less than a minute. It's actually one of the most sustainable crops, meaning all of the plant is used during harvest. There's just so much that goes on. So let's learn about the gin and finish up this video. Okay, Chris, so obviously once the farmer has picked or stripped his cotton, it comes here to the yard. Right. What happens to these bales and modules now? Of course, we take the plastic off first, and it gets loaded to, onto our module feeder line. Okay. That's where it gets broken apart to go to the next step. And that's when the whole process starts. That's right. After that, the module feeder, it breaks it apart because when the modules actually build, they compress it down for transport and, and uh, efficiency. We got to break that apart to loosen the cotton up so we can separate the seed from the land. And the module feeder is the first step. Well, we're trying to separate the trash from the good stuff. Okay. Good stuff mean the, the, cotton, the lint cotton and the seed. Once we separate the sticks, the twigs, everything else, the cotton gets distributed across all three gin stands. Once it 
gets fed down by gravity, the seed gets separated from the lint by, a, there's 164 saws in each gin stand. We had three saws. So 164 saws, three stands, 164 times three. I'm really bad at math. Uh, ask me later. <laughs> After the lint is cleaned and the moisture is taken out, it gets compressed into a bale. A bale, you want it to weigh about 480 pounds. Once it gets pressed, it gets strapped, and then we get it bagged, tagged, and sent to the warehouse. Okay, Chris, yeah. so sustainability is a huge topic when it comes to agriculture. And I know that y'all practice sustainability. So once that seed has been separated from the lint, right. And it's clean. What happens to that trash that was in the pot? Well, that trash we use to fertilize our fields. We don't throw anything away. That provides fertilizer for the crops that we plant there for the upcoming year. And so this whole contraption that we have here yes. is cleaning the cotton and then taking the trash throughout all this, right? right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. It gets dumped into a trailer under our trash house and then they spread it into the field. Yeah. Chris, we see pretty much in a roundabout way the whole process of inside the gin. Yes. Now what happens to the cotton afterwards? Well, we ship it to a warehouse in Raymondville called Gulf Compress, okay. and it's gonna get compressed in, into an even smaller size. Smaller than that? Yeah, smaller than that, believe it or not, but okay. it's to get it ready for shipping around the world in containers on the ship. Around the world. Around the world. We love our cotton. So let me ask you this. This is just a little fun fact for maybe you guys at home. How many bales fill up a truck? In this size, 100. We send them 100 at a time. Wow, yeah. that's impressive. Now you know. Chris, thank you so much for allowing us to come and see just how cotton is ginned. No problem, we had a blast having you all and come back anytime. Careful what you wish for. Oh. <laughs> Where will Ag on Wheels be next? Only God knows and me. We'll see y'all.